Hello YouTube, welcome to another video by the Geo Scholar. I'm going to show you how Google Earth is very useful in the classroom. I'm going to... One thing to consider, you have this 3D representation of the Earth, complete with a lot of aerial photography, a lot of satellite imagery, a lot of GIS data. And you're having all of that data being represented on this 3D image of the Earth, this rendering of the Earth, and I'm going to get in closer. There are many ways you can use this in the classroom. For instance, you want to do a lesson on the Pacific Northwest. You can, you know, you can show this region. You can show the details. You can show so many details about certain areas. For instance, you want to teach about Portland, Oregon, you know, you've got, you've got here the city of Portland, and then you can always look at Portland on a map, but looking at it on Google Earth is a very different matter. Because you've got so many details, you've got the satellite imagery, you can actually show so many details that you could see from the air. And because those details can be shown, you can get a better idea. And because you can look at this in 3D, it will give you a better idea that even physical map, that even like, you know... Certain maps that you see in textbooks can't even give you the amount of detail that Google Earth can give you. Because you can flip this into 3D mode. And it will give you a very different view. You can actually see a lot of details. You can, for instance, you want to show Mount Rainier in, not too far from the Seattle area. There it is, and you're seeing it in a very detailed way. It is far more detailed looking here on Google Earth than it would be on most maps because you can put it in 3D and you can flip it back to 2D just to see it from above. It's, you know, it's a way of showing Earth from above. And you can teach about certain landforms. One thing to remember, a tool is only as useful as the person using as the person using it. So you can have this tool here, but you should also be very invested and be very knowledgeable about geography so that you can use it as a teaching tool. For instance, here you got Seattle, you get closer in, you've got Harbor Island, you got this two stadiums here, but this is obviously port facilities you go further down towards Tacoma you got the port facilities right around here and then you got the Puyallup River that's emptying into Commencement Bay so you can get a really detailed idea of the geography of a certain area And then scroll out. You want to show a place like Texas. And you can really see the contrast in Texas. You start out west, you're in, towards El Paso, and you're in the desert. But then the further east you go, the less desert-like it is and it becomes more and more green. And then 
you can show the progression of rainfall patterns from west to east. And you get to see a cross-section that Texas really is. You can teach about it. And then you can teach about the landform. You get really detailed. You've got here the... You've got this escarpment region here. You've got the Balcones escarpment not too far from San Antonio. I can show you another escarpment further east. Go up here. Got the Niagara escarpment. And it's all about the details. You have to be very detailed to know how to use this and to be to teach it more and more. You've got this Niagara escarpment right up here. And then it, you know, it goes through Ontario. It goes through a lot of other prop a lot of other areas. But this I'm gonna give you an example right here of Hamilton, Ontario, and I've gotta flip this upside down to give you a better detail. See that line, that line right there? That line, and I'm gonna get closer in. Get into 3D mode. Showing the, I am showing the Niagara Escarpment. Look, you see a change in elevation. You get the buildings up here and then you get the buildings down here and you see that change in elevation. You see what an escarpment is. It's like you've got this long cliff where you've got the sharp change in elevation and, you know, a short spatial span. You've got, you know, in such a short distance, it's like you've got a You've got the drop in elevation. And that is some of the ways you can teach. And, you know, you, you see, a, you get a lot of detail. You can get into a lot of detail and use it to teach about a certain area. And then I'm going to scroll out even further, show something else. I'm going to show, let's see what's going on up here in North Dakota. One thing to remember, there are many people, they're going to look at North Dakota on a map and they're going to think, they're going to think flat, boring. And while there and while there is a lot of flat land out here, if you get closer, you can get a lot of details. And these are details that you don't find on most maps. Get to the city of Minot. You got a river flowing through this city. We've got the Suris River. And as you can see, you've got, you've got this, I think this is an oxbow lake. Because you can tell this used to be part of the river and then, you know, river changed course and then, you know, me, all the meanderings that's taken place. And so you've got, you know, little oxbow lakes that are being formed as a result. And so you get in close, you can see a lot of detail about a place. You can teach about landforms that way. And then you get down here to Houston. You see this, you know, you've got this body of water. You got Buffalo Bayou and Buffalo Bayou flows through here and lands 
you know, you, it empties into the bay, empties into Galveston Bay, and empties out into the Gulf. You can learn a lot. You got a lot of details to show. And you can all, you got a little history. You can, it'll show you something about an area, but I'm going to go back. I'd rather not show that right now, but because you've got so much detail, you can, you can teach, you can use this to teach in a certain way. You can teach about certain places. If you like this video, check out other videos on my channel. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe.